All right. Because he's always around for you. You know that. Okay. All right. All right. Hold on. Ah, it's a joy to see you. How are you? Hello, hello, hello. Uh, actually, I think that you seem a little bit on the lower end of uh, positivity today. Not quite very high. I had trouble sleeping, uh, which was very unusual for me. I see that. And I, I feel that you need some energy. You need some energization. Is that a word? I'm not sure. Yes, the word is correct. I don't know if I need it. I'm, I think I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy the way, they, uh, the way I am. Um, right. What's new in your, uh, in your activity? In my relativity is, well, I am just learning a lot of things. I am moving about and seeing a lot of things. You can learn a lot mm. by just seeing. And so I am observing quite a bit at this time. I'm learning how to use uh, spiritual observations to bring about some deeper thought processes about humanity and other places. Could uh, this kind of experience have sex? Could it have text? No, sex. Could this experience be sexually included? Oh, something is wrong with the sound. Um, could discarnate spirits have sex yes if we would like to have sex then we have mm. to create the scenario for it but that sometimes it's sometimes easier not to but yes we can create uh, a scenario for sexual activity mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um so um Yeah, it's really hard to ask about um, how does it feel out there? Uh, in, which, in which dimensional space are you? I'm in more than one. I'm mm -hmm. here with you in this space, which mm -hmm. is different from the space that I am from, which is the Oversoul, which is a, a more godly space. That is the space where you can create a sexual experience. Right. In this particular uh, reality that I am in. I'm in between worlds, and this particular place is for serving mankind and not for, for serving myself. So, um, the oversoul space. Yes. How um, specialized it, is it in terms of um, planetary uh, associations? Is it mostly yes. for, are you mostly communicating with? Earthly spirits or uh, non un un unearthly spirits? I am communicating with the spirits that I want to speak to, mm -hmm. whether they be earthly or non-earthly. I can speak to any spirit that I would like to speak to. Now, sometimes they are speaking to someone else. So I may go there and speak to a group of people that they are speaking to. And sometimes we can be alone and speak together. Now, I can create, create, we can create an appointment or in a scenario where we are speaking alone and an aspect of them which is also busy. There are many that are very busy because they are very popular. So an aspect of them will break free and speak to me by myself. And mm -hmm. I am very busy at times as well. But you have to understand this includes learning about all the galaxies and universes that there are Plus, to be personal and learn about the people that you knew of, the people that you understood and hear about, and the, all the information that you would like to conceive or learn of 
in the universe. Now, of course, you will not learn it all, but there are many, many things that are fascinating to see and to learn. Thank you. Um, is John Lennon popular? Yes, John Lennon's very popular. And um, are you popular? Actually, John Lennon's more popular than me, but mm. I am fairly popular because people know who I am, not only from this planet, but from other planets. They have heard of who I am and what I've done. And so therefore, many want to speak to me because of they want to learn things and they know what I was able to do and they know what I'm able to do now. Um, I have an ex uh, uh uh, a feeling that many of earthly spirits stick together and don't communicate with extraterrestrial spirits. Well, that is true of those that have a belief system that was very strong. Now, say to, there are many, or say Muslims or Jews or Christians, mm -hmm. that only believe that their belief system is the correct one. They will stick together, even though... God is teaching them a greater understanding of who he is. The change is very slow at times mm -hmm. with some of them because it is hard for them to break away from their belief systems from their past life. Now, many do. Mm -hmm. And when they do, they found a greater freedom in the universe and in spirituality. But some do stick together. You are correct. I was thinking that uh, human spirits jump from one religion to another in their incarnations. And maybe they can do that. Mm -hmm. They can incarnate mm -hmm. as another religious belief to experience it, but many do not immediately until uh, they stay in the Oversoul for at least 100 or 200 years to learn about all the different kinds of spirituality and what is right and what is wrong. And mostly everything is right in the right context. And if it's in the wrong context, then many things are wrong. But if they look at it in the right way, it is a positive. If they look at it in a negative way, it can be a negative. So you have to learn to bring your entire belief system into a positive realm where there is little negativity. And therefore they learn that all the religions have much positivity and much uh, beauty and much uh, substance. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Coming back to the idea of sex, uh, I was thinking that, you know, I didn't have enough sex in, the, in this physical life. And when I get there, if I have a choice, I would have more sex, especially with people who I didn't have a chance to have sex. Would it be your prediction or there is so much more other stuff that I would forget about it? What's your, uh, well, how do, how do other spirits behave? Yes, let me tell you this. If those that are very much interested in sexuality will create scenarios so that they can experience it in the Oversoul, it is not quite the same as in the physical body, but it is very positive and beautiful. Now, you, it is not wrong to create sexual experiences with one or more people, but it is sometimes more interesting to learn things and to experience uh, things that are, were never experienced before rather than to go back to old experiences and try to experience them again. Now, this is something that uh, those that did not really have religious beliefs have found that when they get there and they didn't have much religious affiliation that they were free to be actually greater in some ways than those that had religious affiliations. So they didn't have to go through uh, understanding what God was like in different religious experiences, but they could ex experience him in his fullness and in an unprejudiced way uh, right away in some senses if they wanted to. Now, your... Life on this planet is not over yet. You will have more sexual experiences here. But is it with, uh, is there people that you are wanting sexual experiences with at this time that you cannot have it? 
or is it is it just something that you think is past and you want it in the future? Um, no, for example, it is that <clears throat> some women which I loved before are old now and uh, or dead. Yeah. I see. This is something that I understand. You will have plenty of opportunity, if this is what you wish, in the Oversoul for sexual experiences. You will be able to create the exact replica, or you can have that person come to you if they desire sex with you that, in the Oversoul. That can be arranged, but you, if they do not, you can create a repl replica of them to have relations with. Thank you. That answers the question. <clears throat> um, so, what's what are your closest uh, types of friends now? Who do you bond with? I bond with. It's you may surprise you, but I bond very heavily with those that are philosophers and writers. Um, William Shakespeare and. Um, Homer, and, and characters of that nature. I like the way their minds work, and uh, you see they're totally different persons than what they write about. They're very different than what you might think about them when you read their writings. They're actually very creative, and their writings become very creative, and they are very more down to earth and more um, free thinking and uh, scientific even, if you will. And I find them to be very religious, not religious, but spiritual. I find them to be very enlightened. They have a great deal of enlightenment because they had freedom on the third dimension to do what they wanted to do in many many aspects mm -hmm. and so when they reach the oversoul they're even greater expansive beings mm. in terms of a way of connecting to them what do you do with them <clears throat> will we speak we uh, we we actually can learn together and travel together if we want to and there are moments that there are those beings from history that will have a sexual attraction once you meet them. You may be sexually attracted to them, and they may be sexually attracted to you, and that may happen. But it is that we travel together, we speak together, we create together in the universe, and we learn together. It's, it's a wonderful thing. But we're not always together, of course. Like, in, uh, in my experience, the highest moments of connection um, with friends are usually like sitting in the kitchen and drinking tea or sitting, sitting around the fire and singing songs. Yes. Um, how does it translate to the spiritual world? Yes. Vibration is important. So singing and the vibration of the fire and things of that nature would have an effect on your connectivity. Our connectivity is spatial. We do have, we go to places that have high energies, uh, great uh, vortexes and things of that nature to bond greater and to understand thought processes in a greater way. Of course, it's very transparent here if you wish it to be. You may hide thoughts if you wish, but mostly we, do, we leave our thought processes rather open one to another and are able to find the areas of mutual uh, agreement and things that we want to speak about and uh, learn about from one another by, by the true uh, transparency of our beings in the sense that we are very honest and open. But we go to very many energetic places. You would not believe how many energetic and beautiful places there are in the universe that you can go to help you bond and help you understand and uh, revitalize and become greater and all these things. Um, like when you were Yogananda, you were pretty busy 
much of your time. Yes. And um, there was a certain amount of experience and information per, time, per unit of time which came through you. <clears throat> yes. So, so intensity oh. of experience. Now, as you are there, did it become like many times more experience per more Actually, intense or less? How is yes. It? Let me explain. Um, remember, on Earth, third dimension has a certain density and a certain feel. And when I was in third dimension, there were certain sensations that could be experienced by doing certain things in third dimension. In the oversoul, it is a little more expanded. It is not quite as dense. It feels much freer. It feels much lighter. It feels much more happy in the sense that Sometimes, even with your, when you are bonding on third dimension, you feel much joy and lightness and friendship and, and love and maybe attraction. But here, it is all much more integrated in the sense that when I am with somebody, we are actually integrated to some point. I am within them and they are within me in the expanse of our beings. And so, therefore, we are much more uh, involved with one another. That does not necessarily mean sexual at all. It's just the density and how things are here and the, how the aura it maintains itself here in a great advantage to become inclusive with a lot of people at once. So, therefore, it is very loving and wonderful, whereas... The third dimension, you do not always feel that kind of connection. There are moments when you feel deep connections with other people, but here there, it is much easier to feel a greater connection because the density is much lighter. But where, where you are, the emotions are, can be a lot more harsh, whereas here there is very rarely any harsh emotions anything in the negative realm, mm -hmm. unless you want to get close to something that is negative, to learn about it or to understand it better, then you can get closer to a negative entity or being or area or whatever. But in your realm, it, you do not have that choice. It is sometimes that you run into negativity and not, you weren't really looking for it. Where here, you would have to seek it out to find it. Mm. You mentioned emotions, and for me, emotions are invisible, and it's really hard to, to know about them. I emotions? sort of, yeah, they sort of emotions come as um, certain physical feelings, like you feel emotion, it somehow expresses it physically, and then you feel it, but until it's physical, you almost, it's almost un, intangible, intangible. Um, you possibly see Each a lot of has their own. you possibly see right. emotions like very transparently they are kind of in your possession how do you see them well let me let me tell you that your emotions are very unique each one to another everyone on your planet feels emotional emotions to a different strength and degree so therefore your emotions may be at a it may a 60% of some other person's emotional feelings and therefore you're you're they are very personal but some people can bring out emotions in you because of who they are and how you connect with them they can affect your emotional state however in where i am emotions are all the positive emotions are there. If you want to connect with them with other people, you may. It depends on what kind of a day it is for you. Now, day and night, there is no difference. These days here in the Oversoul are endless. You can go on forever and ever. But you do not have to be with people at all times, or spirits, or aliens, or even learning things. You can relax here as well. But the emotions that we feel are interactive. 
not so necessarily so on your planet you each feel your own separate state of set of emotions you might affect each other's emotions but they are not interlocking usually unless there is sexuality or love or if there's a great bond of some sort then you can interlock your emotions perhaps but here is much easier because the density allows you to reach in and feel the emotions of others and in their intensity as they feel them or as they have supported them in the oversoul uh, so how do you how do you see the emotions are they fluid do they have colors what is no. the well not necessarily they are like what you said they are feelings you can in the oversoul you can designate emotions with colors you can designate emotions with waves of energy you can designate emotions with bright lights if you wish you can change your atmospheres to permit what you wish to happen at that moment and so that that's what makes the oversoul so incredible is it's infinite in its creative and its experiential uh, degrees whereas third dimension you you are set into a certain aspect of density and must experience from what you've learned of your emotions within and from others my theory is that an emotion each emotion is a sub program which has its own independence and um, it runs by itself and it has a certain relation to time so it has it has fluid fluid properties that's best i can characterize it in in terms of its behavior because it's not directly real, uh, directly controlled by us it's it's independent from us so it's a problem with certain freedom of are, behavior it is let me tell you this it is learned some of your emotions there are there <laughs> of course from the beginning or from very close to the beginning but they are you are taught how to use them and how to you how they are so to be felt by the people around you your peers and and some people use their emotions differently on your planet than you may use them or even feel them differently and uh, call them different names than what you might experience some may say frustration and some may say that it's fear some may call it um nervous you may call it stress um but they deal with it in the way that they know the best what they feel and what they have learned to call it within themselves now you are a product of all this teaching and learning from your peers and your families and so when when they are ev evoked you are even taught what things should evoke certain emotions within you like sexuality a woman of course or or perhaps pictures or a motion picture or something um that looks uh sexual to you may evoke these feelings where it may not evoke the same feelings in other people now and fear people some people fear heights some people fear being closed in some people fear different things but they do not all fear the same things so these emotions are taught and controlled some come from past life experiences and some come from present teachings you are taught to hate snakes or to hate bugs or to love them or to admire a cow or to worship it these different emotions come from teachings from your societies and from your parents and from peers so even your emotions of love are taught this is when you should love and this is when you should not but some but not all people follow into those different perspectives of how they do things but yet they de behave independently like recently i was watching a movie the la belle verde and um 
there was nothing happening there, but I started crying after maybe 15 minutes of the movie. Uh, there was very little uh, of development in the plot, but it was just the emotion of, you know, happiness and some sort of, I, I interpreted it as, as recognition of, of, a, of a lifestyle of the people. Perhaps this, the feeling of the movie was positive, and you wished that it was more like your life. Ah, most likely, yes. And so, therefore, it touched on your expression of emotions because of desire. You are taught about uh, what is the best kind of places, but you will formulate a thought in your mind of what kind of environment would be best for you. Now, perhaps this movie touched upon that kind of environment and it made you sad that you were not part of it in reality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very likely. Um, next question I had about the time. Um, can you travel time in your, uh, in your space? Yes, because we cannot affect any events. The events that happen on any planet in any reality cannot be affected from the Oversoul. We may visit any time, we may watch it and see it and become part of it in some ways, but we do not change any facts or a single molecule in that, per, in that uh, different density. So therefore, yes, we can time travel as much as we want because we have no effect on time as it, as it were in the densities. So can you travel in the future? Of course we can. Um. Well, how about if you sneak onto some information in the future and you bring it back, that would affect, affect something. Right? Correct. But let, remember this. If you're going to return to any density, you're going to be a blank slate. You're not going to remember the life before or the oversoul or anything. You may be there because of that particular information, but you will not know it on entering that planet or that density, or wherever it is. You may learn it sometime in that lifetime, or may not. Say you went to the future and learned about certain things, and now you're speaking to me. So the fact that you learn so certain things affects you, and that could indirectly affect me. And this way, the information from the future can leak into this present. Now, that is an interesting thought. If it does leak into the present, it is meant to. Uh -huh. Meaning that the Akashic records will control the information that seeps through. Uh -huh. Or God, or whatever you want to say. But sometimes the Akashic records, having known the time, place, and space, and person, can let information come through inadvertently from wherever, so that proper changes are made to society and people, places and things. Mm -hmm. um, now, is your time in your space, which is oversoul space, is your time there somehow uh, coordinated with our time? I have to do that myself. If I want to be with you, I have to know what time it is when I'm with you. But there is really no time in the Oversoul. We can keep track of it in other places. I could have 35 billion clocks going, and it will tell me where, where it, what time it is everywhere. But I just want to know what time it is with you, because I am working with you. But other than that, it does not matter to me what time it is here. Now, if I wanted to go to the future, perhaps I'd want to pinpoint a particular time. I could ask for that planet's time schedule and 
know that what part of the past, present, or future that I would want to enter. But I would have to do a little, uh, uh, a bit of research before I knew all the answers. Um, here is, as I understand, the souls which are incarnated are not with you right now. So when we are done with our life, we come and join you in your reality, in the yes. oversoul reality. So the souls which are, die here come to you in certain sequence. As they die here, like one after another, they would come to you in the same sequence, right? Usually, yes. Let me explain where there might be an exception to that rule. Mm -hmm. If someone has not lived a very good life, Mm -hmm. They have been very negative or have caused pain, a lot of pain, in this particular reality that you're in. They may go through a, a greater filtering and may not, and someone else may pass and they still may be going through the filtering system and that person that passed was a good person may beat them into the place where I am here. But ultimately they will all reach the oversoul so the delay could be like few of our years so how long it could be it depends let's see how quickly they learn their lessons from the filter and then they will get here as quickly as they can so basically without looking at any clocks you can tell which year is on earth by looking at which people are arriving right in some ways yes so there is certain time in your space, which is somehow coordinated with our time, right? Because when I come here, when I come to your space, I know your space. I know this place. I know this reality. And I can tell what time it is because I am here and I can locate the time that I am here in. Yes. I'm talking about the events in your reality. Yes. You, you have certain souls arriving from certain times. Of course. So there is a coordination, at least year by year. Like on this year, you have these people yes, arriving. Next year, you have next people. So there is some agreement between your events and our events in terms yes. of in some living and arriving. They do arrive in a timely manner from your dimension to ours, yes. So there is some coordination. Yes, but it's not up to me. It's just God's coordination, basically. It's, yeah. it's your time frame, and then when they move here, then they change time frames altogether. But they do come in your time frame to here, yes. But we don't keep track of that. And usually, when you decide to incarnate, you would incarnate in a coordinated manner with... I would, yes, I would coordinate with what time period I wanted to be in and with what lessons I wanted to learn. Now, I may change my, I may change some of the plans for my life during that life with uh, decisions that were badly made or decisions that were different than what I had agreed to, but the uh, higher self tries to guide through the life in a way that is most appropriate to the lessons that are being learned, but I, it can be different than what it started out to be. So you serve... That is free will. That is free will. So you serve as a higher self, and you have a higher self, is it right? I do not have a higher self in the Oversoul. If I were to reincarnate, I would. Would you choose or would you be given a higher self? The, yes, I actually am one with my soul. This is my soul that you are speaking to. This is me as a past individual that you are speaking to. We are one. And when we come into another existence, we are together. I am my soul, and my soul is me, and we choose a, a volunteer that we feel is the best for the higher self, as the higher self. So you just spoke about two different 
uh, consciousnesses, you and your soul or something like that. There is two. What's the difference? No, we are one. I am just the personality that comes out of the soul in this particular uh, incarnation. So I am reenacting my personality from a past reincarnate from a past carnation. Aha. Uh -huh. So you could reenact another personality like uh Yes, but I prefer this one with you. So what's your relationship to another personality from the past lives? Like how do you deal with them? Are you the same or are you different? I am different in some of them. Can you talk to them? Are they, can you separate? When I go to the Oversoul, I can see all the chains of its existence that I had and all the different people that are, were me and I am them. And some of them other people want to speak to because I might have been somebody fairly important in other lives as well. Aha. Uh -huh. So, would you speak to your other personalities or you don't want to separate them from them? No, I can speak to them. So, you can speak to um, King Henry? Yes. No, no, no it, was, no, it wasn't Henry. It was William. Yeah, King William, right? Yes. So, right. normally you would be the same person or you, you would not, not speak to yourself, right? Or would you? No, I would be, I'd become that person. But I could speak to that aspect because oh. they existed in a, a human form. So I could go back in time and speak to that person as they were in reality. Ah. But you would feel that you're speaking to yourself or would you sp feel like you're speaking to a different person? I would, I would feel like I'm speaking to a different aspect of myself. Uh-huh. Wonderful. Um, so um, it's a very interesting place here all <laughs> things are possible <laughs> you must understand that to be a reality all things are possible and if they say i say can i do this they say of course you can because everything is possible and i say how can i do that any way you choose you create it make it become it go there Whatever it is, the way that you want to experience it, experience it that way. That takes a little getting used to. But you can eventually understand it. Um, are, are you also capable of creating planets and doing that work? Or you need a lot of other help to do that? Well, we can create planets, but they are not real planets. They are of planets that we created which do not exist in reality. Mm -hmm. If you created from the Overstall, of course we can create planets, but they will not be part of the universe. They will be part of our own creation and we can see mm -hmm. what we can do with it and, and play with the ideas of creating universes and planets and different things. But you have to understand, um, if you're doing it from this place in... Um, the Oversoul, only God puts new planets out. Only God puts out new things into the universe. But we can do all the things we want to do in our playpen here. Uh -huh. Thank you. Got it. Uh, look, look, it sounds very understandable. Yes. Yeah, you, we can dream too. Yes. We can dream. Um, of course. Um, you can learn from creating things. See, when we create our own little planets and moons and things, we learn about how to sustain them and what all the things that are necessary for them to be created because we have to understand what we do before we can do it. Mm -hmm. So um, the veils, what sort of veils do you have? Like your existence is possibly guarded in many ways. So what is there that you don't know? What is beyond a reach for you? We can learn anything that we want to learn. We cannot go through the veils of space and time necessarily because there are things there that, um, well, they, they're the same things that could exist here in the Oversoul, except we don't want to go into those places 
um, except to learn. Mm -hmm. That is all. The only thing that we want to do mm -hmm. is learn and experience. So beyond the veils, we is nothing new that we can't learn here. So because we are given the availability to learn all things, even the things that are beyond the veil, even though we're not supposed to go beyond them, we can create them within this reality. So if you ask God what is beyond the veil, he will show you a picture and let you understand it, and, but you can't go there. You can uh -huh. create those things that are beyond the veil within this reality, within the Oversoul. So the problem is very familiar to you. The problem of Buddhism is that uh, we are stuck in the incarnation cycle, in incarnation view. And there is something beyond that, like next level, yes. which we cannot reach no. by, some, by some reason, by some, um, how do you yeah. say, problem yeah. with perception, I guess, or learning. Exactly. Can you they, see that beyond? Oh, yes. Let me tell you something. Uh, the Buddhists believe that you always reincarnate. You always come back as something, blah, blah, blah. But that is not necessarily true. You, you may always come back eventually, but it does not mean that as soon as you die, you're coming right back. Here you can wait a million years or two million or eight million before you go back into a life if that's what you want. But most people do not wait that long. The experience of dimensions, the experience of the intensity of real life, of corporal, corporal bodies, is really quite wonderful and more intense. And they remember the intensity, and some of them didn't like it, and so they stay in the Oversoul and don't come back for millions of years, but other keys, others go back and back and into different dimensions to experience all the different ways that they can feel and sense and understand. And they know that there will be pain, but without pain, sometimes it gets a little boring. So they want a little bit at least. So that's why some of them go back, although they know that some lives will have a great deal of pain, maybe that they didn't contract for, but if they make bad decisions, there will be pain. So they have to remember too that when they are there, which they don't remember where they're from sometimes, they will make bad decisions. And maybe they didn't think they were bad, but they were bad. And they end up in a lot of pain. Um, so there is that idea, which is actually, I would say, rather popular, um, that uh, this life is an illusion. And when you come to the afterlife, to your place, over soul, it's also an illusion. And there is a bigger truth which is hidden from you by whale. Is it in um, any way possible? How, how am I supposed to know that? <laughs> if yours is not an illusion in my sensibilities, this may seem like an illusion sometimes, yes. I agree. The oversoul may seem illusional, and even reality can be illusional. But what is beyond, how can we know? Yeah, from here we kind of look up and see when we get oversoul, we'll know much more. Oh, absolutely, yes. But maybe you also look up and say, there is a veil which we can feel, and when we get to the certain level of development, we will trans uh, ascend to the next level, which is all, all you know, beyond, beyond this dimension somewhere else. Yes. Now, the creator realm, that is where God lives, is not this realm. We are in the Oversoul, and he is beyond the veil. And we can see him, and he can come here, but we cannot go there. The creator beings are outside the veil here. Although this realm, you cannot ask for anything more than this, really. Don't these have souls which graduate and go up? There are those that are beyond the realm that exist there and always have. And they have come to Earth and other planets, 
but they return to not the oversoul, but somewhere higher. Mm -hmm. Do you channel them? I do not, but if you would like to, you may. Mm -hmm. But th the thing is, we have everything we need here. We do not need to channel the greater beings because the greater beings have given us everything that we possibly can imagine. Mm -hmm. So you can communicate beyond the veil? I can communicate, but, and we do sometimes when we speak to God and, and, and the higher beings, but there is no reason to ask for anything. Mm -hmm. They gave us everything that we possibly could ask for. Uh, do you feel like um, it is a collective dream, the oversoul is a collective dream, and when uh, the oversoul evolves to a certain level, it will raise to a higher level? It is possible. There is that rumor, yes. But whether it is true or not is actually irrelevant, because the realm that we are in is such a high realm that we can have anything we want and create anything that we ask for and see anything that we ask to see and it will all be taken care of. If there is a higher realm, I couldn't imagine it. Uh -huh. Uh-huh. Can you look at the clock and see, ask Jim, is it a good time to continue or is a uh, good time to stop? I do not know what time it is. It's... Uh, my time is 10.35, so plus 3, 1.35. Ah, you may go a little longer, he said. All right, let me stop this.